All right, what's going on there, folks? Good Friday night. It is the Earth Master up here in this uh, live stream and update video on this beautiful Friday night, October 27th, a couple days away from Halloween. 2023 is a year, 1036 p.m. California time. Latest activity shows a 3.0 down into the area of the Baja California region. Now, we have been seeing a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity here across the area of Alaska. Now, this is not the mainland in Alaska, and you know, in terms of thinking about up here where the major subduction zones sit, but this is over here along the plate boundary of the, well, the North American and the Pacific plate boundary. It's been a little while since we've seen any earthquake activity specifically over here and uh, away from this subduction zone. Now, of course, the Gulf of uh, Alaska harbors that major subduction zone, not so much over here. Uh, so this is a little interesting activity. We did see some earthquake movement on the larger size, uh, including a 5.1 and a 5.3. And as you can see here, quite a bit of earthquake activity happening since then. So this is a, a developing event here across the area northwest of Juneau. Now, I did pull up some historical data here. And this gives you a, a good indicator of what can take place out here as far as larger scale movement. Back in 1952, around this area of swarming, we've seen a 6.1 near the Coven Covenant Life, interesting name there, uh, of Alaska. 1952, a 6.1. Uh, now, a little bit further uh, away, we've seen that big earthquake. Remember the 1899 earthquakes back there? That was a big, uh, big earthquake there that created, if I remember right, the largest um what was it the land largest landslide or largest uh tsunami in terms of a local area not oceanic but uh, in terms of like a bay area that did produce a major tsunami out there that was 1899 6.9 so uh, as you can see right along the plate boundary of course that's where we always see some earthquake activity but this movement that we're seeing tonight is off the plate boundary and if you look it's within this little island area which is uh well in between these two zones here in between that uh, 6.1 and that 6.9 that struck so a l a, quite a bit of time has passed here since then so i am going to go out on a limb here and think this is leaning towards something uh, major uh brewing out here this is all just happening here within the last couple hours far as this uptick in movement goes, we really haven't seen any main quake activity out here. 5.3 in the mix of earthquake activity with no main quake. I wouldn't call the 5.3 a main quake because it's right in the middle um, of all the earthquake activity and following a 5.1. Right now it's a top earthquake as far as the magnitude goes, but uh, I think we're looking at something major brewing out here across the area within this region that's uh, very interesting activity stirring up up there also 4.0 um outside the uh denali area north of the uh, alaska range this generally gives me a good indicator here of some extreme stress up here in the gulf of alaska so just a heads up this area is definitely capable of producing some large earthquakes we'll keep an eye on this area and of course report back on any major changes uh, across the uh, area of Seattle, seeing a handful of earthquakes out here um, with a couple twos and even a three-pointer here. The last earthquake here on the Seattle Fault Zone. This area, very capable, producing uh, a 7.0 7 magnitude. I can't remember the exact magnitude here, but I think that type of magnitude underneath Seattle would do more damage locally to the Seattle area than, say, for a, a 9.0 out here across the Cascadia due to proximity and location. Location is everything. Uh, Seattle's a ways away from the Cascadia, so they would not get the brunt effect of that nine-pointer, but they would for a seven-pointer right underneath this area. So we are seeing a little bit of uptick here across the area of the Pacific Northwest in general here. I mean, you can see it rocking up and down here, the Pacific Northwest and all up and down uh, the uh, Pacific Plate Boundary up there off uh, north of Juneau. The area around Mount St. Helens is still seeing some earthquake activity. Quite a bit, actually. Um, looks like um, quite a few microquakes here in the last 24 hours. Nothing major yet, but we're still kind of watching that. Uh, Northern California, not so much. 
Uh, San Francisco, I, I mean... I don't know if I consider San Francisco Northern California. It's been a, it's been one of those battles, right? What do we got coming in here right now? Here in the last thirty seconds, four point three, coming in south of uh, the Carson City area in the Sierra Nevada mountain range here. That's near the Antelope Valley area. This area did see some swarming here, I think, earlier this year or late last year. I remember that earthquake activity. It's been awfully quiet here. Uh, just off of the uh, Antelope Valley Fault Zone. Now, this is the uh, very close to the Nevada border here. 4.3 coming in within the last minute. Uh, so we do have some stress out here, folks. A couple areas showing some heightened movement out here along the West Coast. As you can see here on the map, uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand what's going on out here. Quite a bit of pressure gradients going on. Uh, aside from this recent 4.3 here now, uh, we did see some earthquake activity there in South San Francisco, San Bruno area, literally right underneath the airport. Goodness, how crazy is that? San Francisco International Airport. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to be there about ready to take off and experience an earthquake. This originally came in as a 4.1, 4.2. It has been downgraded to a 3.7. Now, t you know... I can't adjust these magnitudes here. This is uh, adjusted by, well, the folks that have masters in uh, geology and seismology and whatnot. You know, the big, the big shots, the big players in terms of the USGS geologists. But uh, looks like that was reported all across the Bay Area, also venturing into the Sacramento Valley there. Uh, mostly light to some moderate shaking from that 3.7 earthquake. There has been a handful of aftershocks, if you want to call them aftershocks there, following that 3.7. But overall trend right now shows elevated movement here across the West Coast. And that's more so with that 4.3 coming in. Is is it jumping up? Every time I see that earthquake, I, I don't, maybe it's been a 4.3. I don't know, the entire time. Who knows? Um, a little bit of activity stirring up south of the border as well, 3.0. Um, so I would definitely keep an eye here on the West Coast tonight. Things are lighting up like crazy from north to south. Let me check out the uh, um, Earthquakes Canada map here. Stand by for a second. Uh, Canada, let's see if I got this going on here. Earthquakes Canada, there we go. I think that's going to be it. Kind of want to see what's going on up there across this area. Maybe we're missing out on some earthquakes here. Uh, this is their general map, plate boundaries right here. Now, there's the activity up there in Alaska. Not so much here across the rest of the plate boundary, as you can see here on the map. Uh, down there south on the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, yes. And also uh, here just off, the, uh, uh, off of this area along this plate boundary, you can see quite a bit of earthquake activity here in the last couple weeks. Uh, but man, I would definitely keep an eye here on the West Coast right now with this movement lighting up. Looks like the Pacific Plate in general wants to rock and roll. So we do have 5.5 Solomon Islands here prior to this earthquake here along the West Coast. Uh, let's see what else we got here. It's been a while since I've seen California this active. Definitely something brewing out here, I believe. Uh, let's see, Yellowstone, anything going out, in, out here in Yellowstone? Doesn't look like it, but... Regionally, if you really look at the big picture, there's a lot more elevated earthquake activity out here on a broad region across the entire West Coast. Just because one plate boundary out here is showing quietness doesn't mean that the strain is not there. Uh, obviously, the San Andreas Fault is uh, wound up in several sections here. And I think the northern section here is capable of producing a large earthquake as well. Uh, 1906 earthquake, right? It's been over 100 years uh, that type of magnitude today would be quite devastating there across San Francisco. Uh, that is for sure. Some, uh, some structures may hold up, but, uh, that type of magnitude would definitely uh, create some havoc out there. I would not want to be around the San Francisco area when a big one strikes. Uh, any, any big city is not an area to, uh, be around. That's for sure. So keep an eye on the West coast right now. Uh, it's a lot more active than I've seen it here in quite some time. Uh, let me go here to the USGS or the uh, Yellowstone seismographs. I just want to see what's going on here across Yellowstone. Now we are seeing 
what looks like some of that earthquake activity out here across the west coast and Alaska. And um, what else was going on out there? We got Alaska, San Francisco. It uh, looks like some of that earthquake activity is showing up here. These are distant earthquake signatures there on the graph. They are showing up pretty nicely across the seismograph stations. We do have almost a full moon going on out there. So that might have something to do with the uh, gravitational pull. Creating some uh, stress out here across the plate, uh, plate tectonics. As far as local activity goes at Yellowstone, there's not a whole lot. A couple spikes here earlier this afternoon, but that's about it. Not a whole lot of movement there across Yellowstone for now. The rest of the country, not so much going on. Just a handful of earthquakes out in the oil fields. Uh, the bigger picture, let's see what we got going on out here west, westward across the area of the western regions of the Pacific Plate. Uh, the last one here looks like uh, there's that 5.5 Solomon Islands. Got a 5.5 Tonga area, pretty deep. A couple other earthquakes throughout the afternoon there in Taiwan and uh, into the Indonesia Islands area. But, uh, you know, it, it almost looks like things are about ready to pop out here across the West Coast. So we'll continue to watch that uh, for some movement. Hawaii, of course, sits out here in the middle. This has been of interest here around Kilauea Volcano with all the uh, earthquake activity. And the elevated inflation activity. So let's double check and see what's going on across the uh, big island in terms of inflation, magma, intrusion. Go ahead and check out this UWE station here. Uh, the latest past two days activity, we did see inflation here with a decline here in the last six hours. Now, that is a little odd because we really haven't seen that short of an inflation uh, trend there compared to the past 30 days. The inflation has been qu pretty elevated there for a few days, followed up by subsequent deflation uh, and then inflation for a few days and then deflation for a day or so. Uh, but this trend right here is not really following that uh, similar uh, type of activity here on the graph. So we'll continue to watch that. Right now, it looks like deflation is key. Uh, earthquake activity remains elevated. There across the area of Kilauea Volcano, so we'll continue to watch that. Although, it uh, looks like the last one here was uh, earlier this afternoon. So, dying down earthquake activity means dying down influx of magma and dying down in terms of the uh, inflation data. All right, so definitely continue to watch that area up there around Alaska uh, and the West Coast in general. I think things are... Uh, um, you know, that's it's very interesting to see this activity stirring up here. Uh, I don't think this is anything to do with volcanoes. Uh, although there's definitely some volcanic activity up here. It doesn't look like it's situated around one specific area. That would uh, obviously mean that it's volcanic, but this is spread out over a general area. And a lot of this activity is very shallow. We're talking about zero kilometers. Uh, the 5.3 5 is at 5 kilometers deep, so very typical uh, across areas of uh, fault zones out here and fractures. So we'll continue to watch that, folks, and uh, see how it plays out tonight. I mean, obviously, it's definitely keen up, kind of looking like a uh, very active night potentially there across the West Coast. Um, New Zealand, not a whole lot going on there across the area of New Zealand. Nothing showing up here. Across the Earthquake 3D globe, a handful of earthquakes here in the uh, Tonga area, Solomon Islands. This is all newer activity stirring up here. But uh, definitely some adjustment going on here across these uh, major plate boundaries. Of course, associated with the Pacific Plate, you get one area moving. Well, that's bound to be a little domino effect downstream or potentially across the, uh, across the plate itself, thousands of miles away. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Some deeper activity here into, uh, let's see what's going on there across the area. Um, 3.9, that's a pretty deep earthquake here, 128 kilometers deep. That was uh, followed up. Oh, that was uh, following a uh, 3.2 earlier this morning, it looks like, or this afternoon. Definitely seen some activity up there. I don't know about this 5.7 earthquake. I'm not for sure where the EMSC is getting this earthquake activity from, but that was at 715. 
uh, there across the Mona Passage area. This is at uh, nine something. Let's see. I don't know where that earthquake came from. Seven fifteen, huh? So I don't know if the maybe some activity USGS is not picking on picking up on, but uh, if that is indeed the case at five point seven, that's a pretty deep earthquake here for this area, and. Uh, I think we just need to be uh, on guard out here tonight. That's for sure. Friday night, a lot of people partying out here. I can hear them all over the place going crazy. Not me, not this guy. But, uh, you know, that's a, kind of a bad time for an earthquake to strike during the Friday night time frame. Everyone's partying out and about. So we'll continue to watch that. As uh, far as solar weather activity goes, it looks like we're experiencing a little bit of flaring going on here. Not for sure where it's at. Um, but it looks like it is showing up here across the, the uh, solar flare chart. A little C flare activity, a C1.1 uh, coming in. We do have a couple massive coronal holes that have been facing us throughout the last 24 hours. The arrival of this high-speed solar wind stream should follow up here uh, in the next three or four days, depending on the uh, speed of this wind stream, those charged particles from... Uh, 66 and 65 there. We'll continue to watch that and report back on it. Uh, that should arrive probably on the 30th or 31st time frame, maybe for Halloween night. Get some uh, auroras up there into the higher latitudes. Right now, slight auroras up there as we speak into Canada and Alaska, but uh, really not expecting anything major uh, for right now anyway. And uh, solar flare threat, like I mentioned, uh, somewhat low. 40% chance for a C flare. M flare has been somewhat elevated there to about 10%. Let's see why. Uh, let's look at the magnetogram here. Uh, well, I'm going to leave it at that. Why? Why did it get elevated? <laughs> that is the question. I'm really not seeing anything that would uh, require the, uh, the upgrade there to a higher risk category. I, I don't see it. Uh, all these are uh, fairly weak and disorganized and not a whole lot of complexity going on out there. So uh, I'm not going to definitely not going to say there's 40 percent, 10 percent chance for an uh, for an M flare. I just don't see it. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, weather out outlook here today. Uh, still looking at some very cold temperatures out here across California and up into the uh, Pacific Northwest. 41 degrees here at my house. Last night, we dipped down to 32 degrees. I'm pretty sure that was a record for this time of year. A couple towns around me uh, broke some uh, low temperature records because 32 out here in October is a little chilly for us. That's well below normal. Other states, of course, 32 is like, wow, let's break out a barbecue and enjoy the, the evening. But uh, that's very cold for us here in the Sacramento Valley. That cold pressure or the low pressure system is going to get scooted aside with some high pressure building back in behind that. I don't think it's going to last too long there. I was looking at a couple different trends and weather models and uh, it does show some potential precipitation uh, out here. Uh, let's go over to the uh, uh, GEPS total accumulated precipitation amount. I think we're going to see some uh, moisture coming in here to the west coast a lot into the Pacific Northwest over the next model run here. This goes to almost the middle of November. Notice that storm track here hitting up to the Pacific Northwest area. Um, and that's showing some uh, significant precipitation here across the area. Of course, down here in this little valley, I call it the Sacramento gutter because we're surrounded by mountains. Uh, sometimes we get some good rain, but it's got to be from a certain direction here from the south. These cold systems that come in from the uh, northwest they provide that rain shadow the mountains provide that rain shadow here and uh, the sacramento i call it pretty much the second death valley it uh, just uh, prevents uh, the rainfall from accumulating here in the in the valley areas get the convection rising up over the terrain uh jumping over the valley leaving us dry and then uh, reforming over the sierra nevada mountains not cool whatsoever <laughs> but i'm here for now uh, so let's see what we got here back up in uh, Nevada. We've got a pretty good swarm of activity stirring up here around the Walker, California area. 4.2, 2.8, 3.4 within the last few minutes. So something is stirring up out here, folks. 
Uh, I really think the West Coast should be on guard. Probably going to issue out here an earthquake watch for the West Coast in general because of this elevated, broad-scale movement up and down this plate boundary. Something stirring up here for sure. We'll catch you guys back here uh, a little bit later on tomorrow sometime. Uh, seismograph stations. There's uh, a little bit of that's some of that activity showing up there in Nevada or uh, the Sierra Nevada on Petrolia Station. That's outside Eureka. Stay safe, and uh, we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Earthquake watch in effect. Be safe.